and a very good morning to you all. Welcome to the seminar on family and women's rights on this occasion of the birth of our Holy Lady Fatima Zahra. I'd like to start off this occasion by inviting Sister Muslalifa Muhammad from Al Mustafa International University for her to recite a beautiful verses from the Quran. I begin in the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. They are those who fulfill their vows and fear a day whose evil will be widespread. And they give food in spite of love, for it's to the needy, the orphan, and the captive. Say, we feed you only for the countenance of Allah. We wish not from your reward or gratitude. In the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful. Indeed, we have granted you, O Muhammad al kawthar So pray to your Lord and sacrifice to him alone. Indeed, your enemy is the one cut off. Thank you, Sister Mazalifa. That was beautiful. I would now like to welcome Allah Birani, the director of the Iranian Culture Center, to say a few words. We follow. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Dear sisters, Salam alaikum. Thank you to each and every one of you for being here with us today. We are very pleased to be able to welcome you all here in this program. I would like to express my warmest welcome to the respectable guest, the National Chairperson of Jawakita Bhagwata, Mama Shalem Khan, the former Member of Parliament for Women, Mrs. Vesike Shahari, the wife of the ambassador, which, uh, who is not here right now, <laughs> the uh, ambassador of the Islamic Republic of Iran, Mrs. Alwandi, the chair lady of the Khoja Shia Asna Aisha the Jamaat, Mrs. Kaniza Fatima Dramasi, a trustee at Shiri Hindu Mahila Mandal, Mrs. Pushpa Shah, Director of Pink Hijab Initiative, Mrs. Khadija Omari, and uh, Mrs. Kaniza Abbas Nagavi, who had a lot of efforts to set up this program. And Mama Fatome, who is well known to all of you. She has been like a mother for me and for all of my colleagues here. <laughs> and. Uh, to all of you, our dearest guests. Uh, it's a great honor to me to welcome you in this occasion. 
welcome and thank you very much for coming. And uh, last but not least, my wife, Marzia, the one who has supported me for more than 20 years. So I have to say, God has given me the greatest gift in the form of you. I'm blessed to have you in my life. It's my utmost honor to have you here. <laughs> Welcome. As you know all, Today is the anniversary birthday of the daughter of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, Lady Fatima, Zahra Salamullah Alayha. On this occasion, we are proud to be able to celebrate it today here with all of you. On this occasion in Iran, we celebrate this day as the Mother's Day and Women's Day. On this glorious day, let us open our heart and reduce distance to the paradise. Let the sea of love and affection flow at the feet of the mothers and lift the burden of sadness, congratulations, and gifts on their hearts. Let the heart of heaven be filled with the hope and in, in a smile word and in simple words, our prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says, Kissing the mother's forehead is a refuge for, from the hellfire. The family is the most important institution in forming the foundation of society. Throughout history and in various religions, understanding the place of the family and knowing its role in society has been the main concern for the leaders of the societies. So today is the best day to review and discuss about the role of women in the family and how a family can improve and upgrade women's rights in the society. The other occasion for today is anniversary birthday of the Ayatollah Imam Khomeini Rahmatullah like the leader of the Islamic Republic of Iran, a person who history will never forget him. And I would like to finish my words by telling ladies, when the world was created, you were also created to beautify it. Perfectly, you have done your work. World is smiling for you today. I congratulate all of you and let the ladies to celebrate this occasion. Once again, I welcome, I welcome you all and I hope you enjoy your celebration today. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa Thank you, Allah, for running for that enlightening speech. That was wonderful. I would now like to call upon the former member of Parliament for Women, Sister Riziki Shahari. Please enlighten us with your few words. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Maybe I should say that I usually feel not very comfortable to speak in English when I'm told to talk anything about my religion. I feel like I'm not expressing myself enough to deliver the message that I have. But we'll move anyway, we'll speak. I think I'll use Kiswanglish, so I'll be mixing Kiswahili and English. I should start by thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Creator, who has chosen us today to be among His creatures with good health and be able to do what we have planned to do for today. I should also thank the director of the Rani Cultural Center first for organizing this event, which is actually gives us a memory of things to remember about what we have in Islam, but also for inviting me to be among those who are here today to celebrate this very special day. Uh, I didn't really prepare a speech because I was just told to come and say something. So I'll say something. <laughs> it's about women, it's about family, but more especially it's about mothers taking the role model of Fatma Zahra, the daughter of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
In Fatima, we learn a lot. We learn as mothers, but we learn as women in general. Now the women have all those different positions in societies, in families. The women are the mothers, women are the sisters, they are the mothers, they are the wives. And in all those different positions, women have a contribution to make to their family, but also to their society at large. I always prefer to look at a woman as a mother, and therefore teacher number one to the family, and teacher number one to the society. Now, who is a good teacher that we need? What a kind of a teacher does the Muslim society, does the Muslim Ummah needs? We need a teacher who goes with time. We need a teacher who is always ready to learn something new, to learn something useful. And here I would like to also speak in Kiswahili. Yami yetu ya kiislamu inapata changamoto siku zote. Na anayewekwa mbele kwenye changamoto hizo ni mwanamke. Na anawekwa kama mwanamke ambaye hajitambui, mwanamke yuko nyuma, mwanamke hana maendeleo, mwanamke yuko kwenye majumba siku zote na kwa hiyo haendeani na hali halisi ya dunia. Kwa Waislamu hiyo sio picha sahihi. Uislamu amri ya kwanza ambayo ilitolewa ni elimu. Tukaamrishwa kupitia kwa mtume wetu Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam kutafuta elimu. Na tukaambiwa kufanya hiyo ni faradhi, kwa hiyo ni lazima kwa muumini wa kiume na kwa muumini wa kike. Kwa hiyo haitarajiwi kuwa na mwanamke wa Kiislamu ambaye hana elimu. Haitarajiwi kuwa na mwanamke wa Kiislamu ambaye atashindwa majukumu yake kwa sababu mwenye elimu siku zote hashindwi. Na Allah anasema hawawi sawa wenye elimu na sio kuwa na elimu. So today as we celebrate Fatima's day, we have in mind or we have to have in mind a lady who is knowledgeable, a lady who is educated, a lady who is capable to take all her duties. Na huyu ndo mwanamke wa Kiislamu ndiye mama ambaye tunamhitajia kwa sasa hivi. Ni mwanamke ambaye anajifunza siku zote. Na kwa nini ajifunze siku zote kwa sababu dunia yenyewe is dynamic. Inabadilika kila uchao. Sasa leo na pointi moja tu ambayo ningependa kushare na nyinyi. Kuna darasa ambayo na attend kwenye Zoom ya dini. Kwa siku tatu hizi mfululizo tunafundishwa mada ya kumtambua Allah, kuwa na hofu na Allah. Lakini vipi mtu utakuwa na hofu na Allah kama huna elimu? Lakini kubwa alipoturejesha ustadha kwenye nafasi ya mwanamke ikajalile ile swala letu sisi kina mama kwenye malezi adui yetu sasa hivi kitu kinaitwa mtandao sijui internet or whatever we call it in english but it's the mtandao the biggest enemy ever now what the ustada told us now they have i don't know what they call it whether it's a fashion or what they call it an app within the internet that is used as heroin or something to change the youth's mind it is in the mtandao kwa hiyo sasa hivi mama wala usihangaike kwenye begi la mwanao sijui kwenye mfuko wako wa suruali mfuko wako wa skati kwamba labda kaweka ki message kaweka kipati kina sigara kina bangi kina madawa ya kulevya madawa ya kulevya naambiwa yako mtandaoni kwa mujibu wa ustadha so what they put kwamba kuna program ambayo kijana anaingia pale then kuna nyimbo kuna message kuna vitu vile vya kuibilisi vya kumshawishi shawishi mtoto anapotea humo shule haingi Qurani ndio kabisa sasa hivi every now and then mtoto anaingia kwenye program ile je yes, sisi wazazi kina mama tunajua do we check on our kids tunaona sifa kumnunulia leo ana Samsung ah wenzie one iPhone we buy iPhone for him or her do we check what the kids are doing with their iPhones with the Samsung mobile phones that's where we have to go na sisi wanawake wa Kiswahili ndio tunaona sifa nyumbani mimi nitaka kuwasha TV na mwita mtoto hebu niwashie he niweka wewe tu guru ah tu guru la hafai weka kile na kile eti mie sijui mtoto ndani najua 
that's not proper. Huyo si mama wa Kiislamu. Kwa hiyo mimi message kwa dada zangu wapenzi kwamba as we celebrate Bibi Fatima, the mother of Sayyidina Hussein and Hassan, what position do we have? Do we have our Hassans? Do we have our Husseins? Sons and daughters that we can feel proud of? Kwamba we have brought up kids we can be really proud of. That's a mother we want. If you talk of the rights of a woman, then also talk the duties. We cannot separate the two. To fulfill our duties, then we can demand for our rights. Uyo mama tuleambiwa kwamba pepo za watu wote ziko kwenye migu yake ni yule mama ambaye anatimiza majukumu yake ya ulezi na majukumu yake mengine kwenye kujenga familia yake lakini pia kujenga jamii kwa ujumla. That's my message for you my dear sisters today. Asalamu alaikum wa alaikum salam. Thank you so much sister Riziki. You know they say that the best kind of speeches are the ones that are spoken by the heart. And uh, you tied everything so perfectly with education, uh, the role of the mother, and the duties as well. So thank you so much. That was wonderful. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa rahmatullahi wa rahim Ya Allah, we come to you today asking for your guidance, wisdom, and support. Help us engage in meaningful discussion, meaningful discussion, discussions. Allow us to grow closer as a group and nurture the bonds of community. So this is my short prayer to my dear sisters without any discrimination of faith, madhab, or anything. Number one, we are all women and we, we our needs are the same now uh, the young lady over there unfortunately i don't know your good name what is it zainab, zainab. wow mashallah my mom was also zainab zainab she introduced me as the chair national chairperson of the women in Tanzania mainland. So all the faiths, all the Muslims, all, all, regardless of their faiths, we work together. My dear, I have worked very closely with Mama Tahera Ripas. I have worked very closely with uh, Ifat Bai and uh, many, many other Shia women. Now, before I was, uh, um, uh, I was uh, nominated or elected as a member of, uh, as a national chair of the Muslim Council in Tanzania, I was a teacher by profession in Morogoro, I, I hail from Morogoro. That is my birthplace, and I'm very proud of it, of my country. Then I became, uh, I started, I was working with the government. So after being a teacher, uh, head teacher, district education officer in Morogoro, and many, many other posts, but then I decided to become a politician. And in 1985, I stood for elections in Morogoro. And you won't believe, in, in the period of 1985 to 1990, I was the only female member of parliament elected an elected member of parliament in the parliament. And I'm happy to say, and nawashkuru wenzangu wapigakura wangu wa Morogoro wale nichagua kwa vipindi vinne, four terms. And then I also became the deputy minister for 
uh, industries and trade for five years. I also was uh, appointed as a deputy minister for community development, gender, and children. Nili teuliwa kuwa naibu waziri wa viwanda na biashara, lakini pia nili teuliwa kuwa naibu waziri wa maendeleo ya jamii, jinsia na watoto. Kwa hiyo hili linalo zungumzwa hapa kwangu ni sio kitu ngeni. Na naomba ni muambie mwishimiwa mbunge mwenzangu mstafu mwenzangu biriviki. Kwamba, the two of us, we are retired, but we are not tired. That is why we are here. So age doesn't matter. You are a woman. What we have to pray to Allah, that he gives us health. Without health, you can do nothing. So when I talk about health, every day we have to pray to him. You can pray to him, my, my, my beautiful ladies over there. I'm 75 years old now. So this is the advice I'm giving you. Let us eat chakula bora. Healthy food. You can call him. But he has also advised us what to eat. Not just go for mishikaki, all those things. Once in a blue moon, it is OK. Now, akina mama, nani kama mama? Nani kama mama? Nani kama mama? Hakuna. Hakuna bila. Hakuna mtu yoyote bila mama. She is the one who will take care of you. She is the one you can confine, co confide your, your secrets. And they will never be leaked. She is the one who will take care of you when you are sick. She is the one who will soothe you when you have so many problems on this. Mother Earth. So, this, I mean, tunavyo sherehekea siku ya mama duniani. I ambayo ina ambatana na mazazi ya ya Saida Fatma bin. Zahra. Today it's her birthday. So these two occasions coincide in our Muslim community. I know the government also has Siku ya Manamke Duniani, Women's Day, which is on 8th March, every year. And every year there is a slogan, Kuna Kaulimbiu. And by the grace of Allah, I have addressed the UN two times in New York on uh, Women's Day. So today I'm addressing my, my sisters, my, my, my kids over there, my grandkids over there who are not listening but praying. I'm very happy they are playing over there, happily, because Tanzania is a very peaceful country which is led by Mama Samia Suluhu Hassan. We pray to Allah that God keeps her and that she leads her on the right path. My dear Bibi Fatima. Bibi Fatima was the daughter of Bibi Khadija and and to me Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. She was a very good and obedient daughter, like her mother. This is what, what my, my, my colleague over here has said, that we should not forget our families. 
never. And we should not have lame excuses that no leo ni siju ni lienda wapi, siju ni lienda huko. Sawa, atukukatazi uende huko unakotaka, lakini you have you have to set aside time for your families. Our families are splitting very badly. Very badly. You go to any house now, many, many houses, you will find divorces. So many divorces. Hatukjui kuvumiliana. Divorces. Now, let's take an example of Bibi Khadija, who stayed with the Prophet. Remember, the Prophet did not bring a second wife during Bibi Khadija's time. He never. Why? Because there are many, many, many restrictions to that. It's not that, okay, a man is, is allowed to get four wives, two wives, but but there are conditions. And those conditions are very, very tough and they cannot be fulfilled. Especially when a man is, said, is, is asked to give equal love to all the wives. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Na 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 Allah mwenyewe walikuwa wanachukia sana neno talaka. Walikuwa wanaichukia sana. Lakini ilibidi iweke hivyo. Iwe hivyo. Kwa sababu ugonjwa unaweza kutokea kati ya mume na mke na inawezekana tukauana. Na this is what is happening today. There are so many killings in Tanzania. In Tanzania. In January, I was, I was watching TBC. And he said, in this, this month in January, watu waliochukua roho zao ni akina mama na wengine wote because of inheritance, because of um, marriage disputes around 26 in January. Why? Why? What have we learned from Bibi Khadija and Bibi Fatima? What have we learned? We don't follow. We don't follow what they have said. And remember, among the women who have been pro promised paradise is Bibi Khadija and also Bibi Fatima. Why? Why have they been promised? Because they followed what Allah and what the Quran says. Therefore, it is very, 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 very important and vital that we follow and act. Act, you have to act. It is no use saying, okay, I'm fasting. But after fasting, do you act? Do you go to the orphans? How many, or how many orphans are there? They cannot get one meal. Yani, futari moja hapati. Ye, tunawalisha. Do we visit the, the, the sick? Ndiyo, ndiyo, ndiyo maamrisho ya Allah. Nabi Khadija, mama yetu, alikuwa mwanamke wa kwanza kuwa muislamu. Sasa haya yote anatokea kwa sababu hatu tekelezi. Hatu fanyegi, hatu tekelezi. Laiti kama tungetokea, haya mauwaji haya, yange sitisho. Sisi ni akina mama, viongozi, najua wengi ni viongozi. We have to talk about this. Why are these killings in Tanzania? What is wrong? Why? 
step mothers this step mother in moshi umesikia habari zake unajua amefanyaje the step mother a beautiful baby i mean miaka mingapi yule mi 5 6 years old step mother she pus, pushes her katika gata gata what do you say yeah and then she goes to work to pretending that she must have fallen five year old girl step mothers she died last week last week a step mother we know a step mother is like a mother the husband goes to work why he knows he has left the child in good care of a mother regardless whether she is step or not but this happened last week in moshi kama sikosei and there are many many this 26 kwa kweli paka mimi nikasema kuna nini shetani gani shetani gani katuingilia therefore my wito wangu ni kwamba tufuate maamrisho na tu, tu, tujaribu kuishi kama bibi Fatima bibi Fatima was very obedient <coughs> to her husband eh swaba wake mume wake alikuwa Ali bin Abu Talib walikaa vizuri pamoja na kwamba kulikuwa na ufa, ufukara lakini what she did she <laughs> she 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 stuck she stuck to him and her family na watoto wake Imam Hassan na Imam Hussein na wengine kawalea sio leo wewe ukikosa maji ile maji yale ya chupa mineral water pigia simu mama mama leo sijapata mineral water there are some things that have to, to be hidden in your own family between you and your husband and your family lakini siku hizi hakuna siri siri zote ziko nje ndugu zangu bibi fatima ni mfano bora miongoni mwa wanawake wengi ambao wana mifano mizuri kwa hiyo tufuate mifano yake kwa sababu sio haipo sina muda in fact i was not supposed to come here today i had a meeting with the mufti of tanzania and nimefurahi it has been postponed so that's why i'm here and that's why i came late and i'm happy to meet all of you otherwise i wouldn't have i i, I know my friend from the bohora community very well i know my friend from the hindu community very well now this is called intra faith intra when only the muslims meet regardless of their madhabs that is uh, faith gani tumesahau therefore there is interfaith and intrafaith this is interfaith interfaith because we have a hindu lady with us and a christian maybe but once when we are among ourselves muslims it is intrafaith or when the christians are among themselves uh, the catholics the the protestants the the, the amish then that is in, even among the hindus you have faith i mean you have uh, faiths of different faiths but you meet you meet why because we want to bring peace and harmony in this place i heard from mr pirani that today is also ayatollah uh, khomeini day so <laughs> i was scribbling there ayatollah khomeini was born on 24th September 1902 in a village called Khomein in Iran and he died on 3rd June 1989 in Tehran before Ayatollah Khomeini we had a king in Iran his name was 
somebody Pahlavi, Shah, the Shah of Iran. And his ideas were all Western. The women were just walking three quarters naked, Western. He had Western ideas. So Khomeini, when he, after the revolution, the first thing he did was, he had three, three ideas. The first one was for women, hijab. Hijab for women. And that is why now most of the Iranians and most of the Shia women, they are clad in Islamic, out, uh, Islamic dressing. And we saw a clip here. If you have a hijab, it doesn't mean that you have closed your ears. You have not closed your ears. Your ears are open. Your eyes are open. You can think better. And that is why so many professions were, showed here, were shown here. So many. Even horse riding. I'm so much impressed. Horse riding. Musicians playing different organs. Taking parts in sports. Painting. So many professions. So nobody should say that we are confined to our kitchen. No. No, we are not. We are not. But we balance family life and uh, social life. We have to balance. So I said, Alikwana, he had Alikwana Nguzo Tatu, three, three pillars when Ayatollah Khomeini came. Three pillars. The first one was hijab for women, which we are all wearing. But before that, Mama Yang, Mama Yang. The second one was to oppose US policies and Israeli policies. That was his second pillar. And the last one was Uchumi Waki Islam, Islamic economy whereby there is no riba. We Muslims believe that there is no interest. So that is what he and his dream did come true till Ali Poitwa wa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Kwa hiyo ombi langu na waombeni na mnajua nimechukua muda mrefu bi Zainab ana mtazama sana lakini na sitapata tena nafasi nyingine kuzungumza na nyanyini na waombeni tufuate maamrisho ya Allah tufuate maamrisho ya mtume wetu Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam tutaishi vizuri mama hapa mheshimiwa mwenzangu hapa kazungumza kwamba paradise paradise lies under the feet of a mother but you have to work for it if you don't work for it you will not get paradise but i happen to say my asante ni sana kila la khairi let us enjoy this day and follow what allah has promised us shukra na watakieni kila la khairi Mama Shamim, thank you so much for that powerful speech. I must say it was absolutely brilliant. And I also have to say that you have, mashallah, quite the achievement. So uh, after this program, I'd like to come to you to get some insights, inshallah. <laughs> okay. Next in line, we have Sister Nergis Lilani and group um, for a short kasida. Bar Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad salawat. Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad wa Ajjil Farajam Bibi Zahra 
کریم ہماری اس سلوات کو جنت البقی فاطمہ زہرہ شہزادی کی مدینہ منورہ میں پہنچا دے باواز بلند ترین سلوات اللہم صلی علی محمد و آل محمد و عجیل فرصل That was beautiful. Thank you so much. I'd now like to call upon Sister Pushpa Shah, who is a trustee at Sri Hindu Mandal. Honorable leaders, invited guests, and all my friends here. Namaste. Salaam Alaikum. As Zainab uh, introduced me, I'm Pushpa Shah from Sri Hindu Mila Mandal. And I am trustee over there. And my journey with Hindu Mila Mandar, with Lions Club, and with our community is a really long, long back, and uh, it's enjoyable. Especially when we get support from our family and friends, it's getting more enjoyable and successful. So my journey was also like that. Last. 30 to 40 years, I'm involved with social activities with, uh, as a religion teacher at our community and uh, especially at Lions Club. As all speakers elaborate, our being as a woman is such an important thing. In our culture, we say this beautiful planet, Prutvi Mata. That means Mother Earth. Imagine, we are the mothers and we belong to Mother Earth, which we Mata. It's a great title for us, all of us. Because as a mother, we have so many responsibilities. As a mother, we create family. We create generation to generations. But it's up to you on our mother's, mother's role, as a mother role. How we produce and how we create next generation. Because as uh, Shamim Khan said, nowadays family is breaking, divorce is everywhere. Why? Because the root is family. Any society belongs to family. It starts from family. Any leaders start from home front. So, our responsibility is really, really great and most important. Nowadays we see ethical values, morality is declining. That's the reason everyone wants to get married a Bollywood or Hollywood actor. <laughs> they imagine their wife, future actress like Deepika Padukar or Priyanka Chopra. And this is not happening because reality is different. That is the only screen life. But reality, in reality, we have to accept that there are problems. Everyone is not supposed to be a Shah Rukh Khan or everyone is not supposed to be Deepika Padukar. We have to accept. And because of this wrong imagination of your future, we ruin our family life. And especially today, as we are all celebrating the birthday of a great soul, who is also a woman. So let's celebrate being a woman. And we remind ourselves, being a woman, is we, are, we have superpower. We can do anything we want. But sometimes we tend to forget how blessed how powerful we are and also other women like us, they are also blessed and powerful. Many times we tend to fall prey to envy, jealousy, criticism, backbiting, gossip. So this leads to bad relations. Someone who speaks honey tongue in front of you. But as you send for bad turns, they start big biting. I have seen so many 
ladies in our society. As soon as meeting finished, we reach home. They start calling. This one do, did this thing. How he criticized? How was she? She believe something. She is something. No, it's not helpful. Whatever you you should be courageous. You should have moral courage to speak the truth. There is nothing bad in it. Why bad biting? It get it gets us down and it spoils our name as a woman. It's not a good thing or it's not a virtue. And main thing, we should not compete or compare with one another. Instead, we should compete with ourselves. We should strive to be a perfect or example for others. We can guide them. And my journey was like that. I, I when I joined Lions Club, as Shamim Khan told us. There are so many opportunities to serve, real, in real meaning we can serve. And especially nowadays when society needs you, when there are so many problems. If you visit one orphanage in Dar es Salaam, far away, the, I have seen so many children who are hungry for days. We prepare food for them and we, we serve. Within five minutes they finish their food and if you ask, do you want another portion? They are ready. So this is also make us something important. We are blessed with everything. And look at those children. They don't have one time meal. And it makes you kind, humble. And you know the value of your life. And how blessed we are all. So social services doesn't mean that we neglect our home. In our Gujarati we say, Tirat Badi ne jatra na karai. That means you can't ruin your home front and go for social services. It's not. We as a mother, as a sister, as a wife, we have to look after our family first. But if you support, if you get support from your family, it's easy. Not, not uh, neglect. They are not criticizing you, they are supporting you. So there is a positive vibration. And this positive vibration creates confidence and faith in ourselves. We create ourselves like this. We are not born with abilities. We are not born with qualification. We are not born with great virtues. We learn and we proceed accordingly. Whatever challenges are there, we are trying to face. Life is not about being rich. Of course we need money. It's not about highly educated, but really we need education. It's not about very famous. Everyone wants to be famous. But life is about being kind, humble and real. Don't pretend yourself. I know something, I know everything. No, we are all not perfect. Try to learn. When you go and mingle with societies or other women, try to learn. Something is always there. Something positive is always there. And we should learn from each other. We should not let down those who are not able like us. You try to teach them. You try to encourage them. You try to compliment them. And in a way, they will be your friends. They will be obliged. Even my students, when I teach religion at our community, they really understand the value of religion, of moral aspects and uh, ethical values when they go to Western countries. And they, they call me, they thank me. Okay. Yes, now I understand what the religion is, what the values are, what the morals, morality is. So, it's beneficial. Whatever you put, it always grows. But root is our family. We start from our family. A long tree survives with their roots. But roots are not visible. We are not visible. As a mother who says we are important, very few. 
Very few men you heard here say, yeah, you are great, you are doing very good work as a mother or as a wife. Because our society is still dominated by men. But when our own children grow, being successful in so many fields, like our, we are proud of, we are head of country, is a lady. So it's a compliment to every woman and it's an encouragement for every woman that we should try to be like her. At least we can go up, we can't go down and don't let down anyone. That's a very bad thing. By lending helping hand, you will find that the moments that stand out are the moments when you have done things for others. So, don't be selfish. The problems and needs of people are limitless. This so was our opportunities. Even on, we can't help each and everyone everywhere. But we can help someone, somewhere, some with something. So keep in mind, try to follow and uh, we pray to God to give us strength, to give us good vibrations, to give us positive attitude and we do something for others. Let us share my universal blessings. Let the whole universe be blessed. Let everyone be engaged in one another's well-being. Especially in this present situation, let's pray for everyone happy, healthy, peaceful and peaceful life. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Asante Sana. And I am really grateful, my friend Kanis, to inviting me as a speaker to this Iranian Culture Center. And I am really very humble. I am thankful for everyone in the audience. And uh, there is my friend also. There is my very good friend. And she said this, they are not limited to a certain crowd. We should, our field is very wide. So we will welcome each and every one. And I am really, really very glad, very humble to be here as a speaker. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mushpa uh, Ben. That was absolutely amazing. I think I'm actually lost for words. I don't have anything to say because that was so, so beautiful. But I think one thing that all of us will agree to hear is that your aura actually spoke energy. It spoke so much that, I don't know, <laughs> I have nothing to speak. So thank you so much for that. Um, Next on the agenda, we have a casita by a Kauther and her sister. They're also known as the Banjatan group. Ya Zahra, Ya Zahra, Ya Zahra. Ya Zahra, Ya Zahra, Ya Zahra. Ya Zahra, Ya Zahra, Ya Zahra. Ya Zahra, Ya Fatima, Ya Fatima. Ya Fatima al-Ang.
از وای پا پنبر صدر آف ایران آی وان تو سی ویلکام تو آل آف یو موس ویلکام تو دی هیر اند از وی نو وی آر گادرنگ هیر تو سیلیبریت دی بیگست دی این دی یر ویچ از دی برس دی آف فاطمه تو زهرا دی داتر آف پیانبر دی مسینجر آف گاد Um, we know everything about her, so just the important things is uh, to know any uh, little things about uh, her life and uh, 
everything he, he, she was believing and uh, now we have to learn it, learn that and know in our life. Uh, uh, I want to say a uh, sonnet, Iranian sonnet, uh, that is show my happiness because of this day. آب زنید راه را کین که بهار می رسد مجده دهید باغ را If I want to translate it to the English maybe I cannot say my sense exactly my sense with this but I think in Persian it's better to say my sense, my feeling because of this day as we know, Fatima to Zahra is create the time that was the darkness, very darkness, and emerged of full of darkness in on that time that they know the girls as a shamed and they buried the ladies. By creator of Fatima to Zahra, Umm Abiha Siddiqat al Kubra, God sent this message that uh, the ladies can be the greatest uh, people in the world. So he, so God, uh, make her as a master of all ladies in the world. Not on the time, Imam Sadiq uh, stated that. Uh, or uh, someone ask her, ask him, uh, is the uh, greatest lady in her time? He said, no, Maryam, daughter of Imran, was the uh, master of the ladies on that time. But Fatima to Zahra is a master of ladies from the whole world, from the beginning uh, until the end. He was born on the 20th of Jamadi Sani with a noble Khadija mother and uh, messenger of God, uh, Prophet Muhammad. That, uh, <laughs> I'm not so ready because... Uh, Let, let's uh, talk about the, his, uh, her rule in society, in uh, family, in her life. Think, uh, uh, look a little about that. Uh, Fatima to Zahra was uh, married with Amir al Mu'minin Ali alayhi salam. And, uh, and she make her rule as a wife of uh, the second person after Prophet Muhammad. Uh, in the best way. She knows uh, Amir al-Mu'minin is uh, uh, the one who is, her role, his role is very important in society. So always she was uh, be with him and defense of him. And uh, uh, she tried to defense of Velaya. Uh, to give it to the person who is uh, take the velayat. And also, uh, out of that, she was uh, inter in inter to the uh, meeting of Ansar and uh, Muhajir, Muhajirin to uh, say uh, everything about the velayat of Ali alayhi salam and uh, defense of their, uh, their uh, poverty, their rule, their, uh, and, uh, and his father, his husband. Also in her, uh, in her room, in her family, in her house, uh, she was the best lady, she was the best woman uh, for Ali alayhi salam because uh, she knows that Ali's house is the very important house 
on that time. She has to protect her husband. She has to be a good wife because she knew that the jihad of lady is to satisfy uh, their husband. So she never tell lies. She never make angry the Ali alayhi salam. She never go out without permission of him. And uh, uh, the Amir al muminin was very uh, delight because of his uh, wife. And he said, she, Fatima never make me angry and always I was uh, happy with her in home. And uh, uh, the house of Fatima was uh, full of beauty and holiness because she tried to keep it like that. Because she believed that in Islam, uh, the duty of lady is to uh, keep the house, keep the family, keep the uh, life for children, what must be uh, the important things uh, for a woman. And any woman who has to, uh, any woman who wants to go to the heaven must, uh, after, do his duty as a fast, pray, everything, uh, if they do that very well, uh, they can go, they have a permission from Fatima to Zahra to go to the heaven. So, we know, uh, we can understand how is important the creature of uh, Fatima to Zahra for society, for uh, Islam to give the value to the woman, to the world. Not only on that time, but only in the all whole the world and all the times. Um, and uh, Fatima did it. Fatima did it by uh, do the best in her life. The name of Muha Fatima is one of the name of Fatima is Muhaddese. Uh, that means when she was at home, uh, the messengers and the angels uh, from the sky come down and talk to her. And uh, because of that, they call it Muhaddis. Uh, the other name is Zahra. Uh, Zahra means when she was uh, standing to the mihrab to pray, uh, her light was like stars on the moon, was so light. Uh, uh, that's why they call it Zahra. And uh, uh, the important thing is to know, to know, be, uh, to know our duty is to be like Fatima to Zahra, to obey his life, to obey his beliefs, her beliefs, and continue her way uh, in every, in any part of our uh, life, uh, to keep uh, children, as we know, he has, she has uh, five children. Uh, uh, she grow them in the best way uh, and give it to the society. And we know everything about that five children. Uh, no need to explain more. And we have to obey her. We have to learn how she, how she was alive, uh, and how she uh, lived with her husband, and do her duty as a lady in society, and protect his father. As we know, uh, Prophet Muhammad called her. Uh, she's my uh, my da my mother. She's Umm Abiha because she was always uh, keep. Her father, after Khadija passed away, uh, Fatima was the one who uh, protected her father. So Prophet Muhammad called him, called her as a Umm Abiha. And as we say in the home, he was the best mother for, ch for children. She was the best wife for Amirul Mu'minin. And uh, we can obey her and learn how to, la how to live, uh, to look at her life. So uh, the salam and the peace 
of all people, good people, and angels to her. And happy her birthday. And I want to read a part in Persian because if I want to translate it to the English, I cannot uh, give my sense as it. I think some of you, uh, you know uh, Persian, so it's not bad to listen to this. It's uh, about Fatima to Zahra. موجها نامت را بر سخرها نیز حک می کنند قهرمان حق در خلوت خاموش خود نام تو را الگو قرار می دهند فاطمه یعنی سلام خدا نام تو یعنی بهار وجود نام تو مهربانی است که نصار وجود پیروانت می شود ای راه نما و رهبر زنان دو عالم افت و نجابت را هدیه کن به نام خود ای صدیقه تاهره نام تو حتی لاله ها را در دشت مهربانی به شور زندگی وامی دارد نام تو کوسر خدا و همتای علی است تو خورشید رسالت و ماه ولایتی ای که نام تو چشمه خاکی و تحارت است نام تو همان کوسر است که تو را خطاب می کنند نام تو همان چشمه پاکیزه معرفتی است که نامت را از آن الهام گرفتند ای مظهر دلدادگی و خداپرستی میلاد مسعودت مبارک باد ممنونم Thank you, I love you And forgive me because I wasn't ready so I had so, some headaches so I couldn't make ready something to say, so uh, if there is a mistake because of my poor English, so sorry. <laughs> I apologize me. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Sister Mariam. I think that was beautiful. Um, we, have, we now have a video by uh, Sister Shayda Nikoravin who is the producer and the director of the documentary Hijab Without Borders. Can we play that please? Samantha Ramsey, who is the chair leader of the Ladies Managing Committee of the Khoja Shia Ishna Ashri Jamaat. Respected dignitaries, esteemed guests, Salamun alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May peace be upon you all. Since morning, we have been uh, listening to different aspects of a woman's life in the light of Fatima al Zahra. When talking about the greatness of a personality, one needs a yardstick to compare the strengths and weakness of that individual. However, if that person herself is the highest yardstick, then it makes it impossible to adequately describe her greatness. Sayyida Fatima al-Zahra was such a personality. I would like to thank the Almighty, first of all, and the host of today's programs for giving this opportunity to say a few words on the life of this great woman, who I very proudly take as a role model in each and every aspect of my life. Her merits, they are unmatched by any woman known in history. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala testifies in the Quran himself about her purity and her piety. Traditions from the Prophet and verses of the Holy Quran are sufficient as a proof to par the excellence personality of this great woman. Fatima to Zahra, she was no ordinary woman and neither was her own home an ordinary home. Imam Khomeini has been reported to have said, the home of Fatima to Zahra, quote, this was the smallest and the simplest house in Medina. 
but had the longest and the most profound impact on the world. It is only when the world opens their windows and studies about this household will mankind be impacted by it. Dr. Ali Shariati, in his book, Fatima is Fatima, says, the value of Mary ties with Jesus Christ, whom she delivered and nourished. The value of Asya lies with Muhammad, whom she befriended with Fatima and whom she gave birth and nourished. And the value of Fatima, what can I say? To whom does her value belong? To Khadija? To Muhammad, to Ali, to Hussein, to Zainab. And I wanted to begin in this manner with Fatima. He says, I got stuck. I wish to say, Fatima is the daughter of the great Khadija. I sensed it was not Fatima. I wish to say, Fatima is the daughter of Muhammad. I sensed it's not her. I wish to say, Fatima is the wife of Ali. I sense it's not Fatima. I wish to say Fatima is the mother of Hassan and Hussein, Zainab and Kulthum. I sense it's not her. No, all this is true and none of them are Fatima. To whom does her value belong then? Fatima is Fatima all by herself. Women can play many roles in a society. In an Islamic society, Women can fulfill several individual and collective responsibilities in different spheres and under different conditions too. However, many of these roles and responsibilities are not set mandatory by the teachings of Islam. And these often reflect personal effort, attributes and talent on the part of woman herself. Today's modern technology, with all its sophisticated tools available, for knowledge, making life easier, and high-speed communication cannot be compared with the life and the times of Prophet of Islam and those who lived with him in, at that time with harsh physical and socio-political environment in Arabia. One can easily appreciate that performing various intellectual pursuits such as seeking knowledge, imparting education, training, communication, even living a normal life was in no way comparable with today. Fatima was known as Sayyidatun Nisa al alamin the chief of all women, the chief of women of all the worlds, not one world, alamin of all the existing worlds. Let us now step inside the blessed home of Fatima and look at some points from her aspect. She fulfilled very many roles. However, I would like to highlight a few aspects from her life. Her role as a teacher and a mentor. Her role as a very talented teacher can be seen in her training of her sons Hassan and Hussein and her daughters Zainab and Kulthum. Lives of these great personalities need no words of introduction. The incidents of Imam Hassan and Hussein teaching wudu to an elderly companion of the Prophet in a manner that didn't hurt his self-respect highlights many aspects of her mastery of teaching not only Islamic fiqh, not only Islamic jurisprudence and upbringing but also as an example of expert of practical ethics and morals. One can imagine high level of depth observation, her behavior imparted to her children in the areas of ethical conduct. Let's come to the other part of her life where we all can re relate to, especially living in this part of the world. Her role as a master of her maidservant, Fiza. Her role as a master to the maidservant bestowed to her by Prophet of Islam is yet another example of her multi-dimensional role that she played as an active and compassionate Muslim woman. Not going into the details, we cannot find a single housemaster who would take turns every other day with her maidservant in household work. 
do we? <laughs> Let's be honest with ourselves. So, one day, Hazrat Fatima will do the household work while her maid servant, Fiza, would take rest. Wow, hard for us, right? This unique routine in the midst of hardship in the life of Muslims in Medina, where in 10 years when the Prophet was present in 27 battles and her husband, Imam Ali, was present in many more, being away from the house, how could a housemaster allow this alternate day house chores under such dy dynamically adverse lifestyle of her husband and her father? Except that she had a so strong sense of human values and human rights to its utmost level. She also had communal responsibilities. We cannot limit the life of Fatima living in a house and grinding food. That was not Fatima. Her role and responsibilities towards the members of society were such that one can easily appreciate from the history as to how she spent different duties towards different members of the society in the time that she was living it. She was seen giving away her own marriage dress, jewelry, food, and other material possessions to the needy Muslims whenever required. Food for us to ponder, right? How much do we, how much do we gather? And how much do, are we ready to give the best of what we have? Not only towards Muslims, but she also performed her similar role as a helper and supporter whenever required towards followers of other religions too. She fulfilled her social responsibilities to the utmost level of self-sacrifice and not seeking any thanks or returns, only as a duty towards God and his religion. Again, food for thought. Where do we find ourselves when we give charity? We do give something uh, to others when we help others. Do we look for our name to be there? Or are we following role models like her? Mashallah, many women sitting here are uh, of high level uh, uh, taking responsibilities and social workers. Let's see at that time how she held her responsibilities. Her role as a voluntary social worker in the ways of Islam can be seen helping the Muslim army, performing role as a nurse, consoling the families that had lost their dear ones, helping needy and orphans, irrespective of her own needs and difficult situation. The door of her house was always open towards anyone seeking remedy of his or her needs. This great lady Fatima performed role of a distribution manager. Today we are proud we have women into business world, in the corporate world. She has taught us to how to manage ourselves 1400 years back. She managed the wealth obtained from her, the land of Fadak that she had and other properties gifted to her by her uh, father, Prophet Muhammad. This wealth was distributed by her according to the principles taught to her by the Prophet to needy Muslims and families of orphans and widows who were martyred in the battles. Her role is yet another bright aspect of her personality as a manager of revenues and its distribution to the needy according to the principles of Islam. Hazrat Zahra on several occasions performed her role to emphasize women's modesty and her preservation of Islamic modest dress, the hijab. And just a while ago, we heard from that lady the importance of hijab. However, the point worth pondering here is that Women can perform their social activities and play their role actively in society while behaving modestly and it is no way a hindrance for a woman. 
The multidimensional personality of Fatima to Zahra is an illuminated example for today's Muslim women, not, and not only living in Islamic society. A woman can be at the same time a good mother, a daughter, a wife, a teacher, a mentor to her children, a voluntary social worker, a distributor of wealth and property, a compassionate housemaster, a model of self-sacrifice to give away her possessions, a promoter of Islamic modest dress, modesty for women, a mujahida in the time of war and supporter of Muslim army, and abida, the one who worships, praying to God in night, and much, much more. Setting Hazrat Fatima to Zahra as a role model, a woman can perform all these roles under any circumstances. Whether the society is at peace or at war, whether there is economic material hardship, and when only the only hope that she looks up to is in God. Life of Hazrat Fatima is certainly a bright guiding star under all circumstances for the women of this world. She valued learning and understood about the importance of acquiring knowledge. She treasured books very much and shared whatever she knew, never getting tired of answering questions. Therefore, we ask ourselves, what is our role? Our role is to continuously strive to acquire knowledge, share it, and to always remember just like Pushpa Bain, I can recall, even she said, we are a society of compassion and there is no comparison or competition within ourselves. As a teacher, being brought up by the Holy Prophet, known as Madinatul Ilm, and in the company of her husband, Ali Yun Babuha, it is easy to understood, understand why she was highly enlightened with the knowledge of Quran and the Islamic laws. She was the first Muslim woman teacher who made time, despite all her duties, to gather all the wives of the believers and teach them principles of their religion, narrate the sayings and traditions of her father. These contributions must have taken place from a very young age, since she died at a very young age. So the message for us, Muslim women who have been encouraged to learn and ask what they do not know of the Sharia and then play our part in whatever capacity that we can. May this auspicious occasion of the birth of the Lady of Light be blessed for you and your families. The example of daughter of Prophet Muhammad will always be a model of how women can be true servants of Almighty in any sphere of life. Thank you so much for listening and may Allah guide us all. Thank you. Please, boy, thank you so much for that beautiful speech. It was amazing. I'd now like to call upon um, Khanum Kaniz and Nakwi, uh, who is also a keynote speaker, to say a few words. Please. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين خاتم النبيين صاحب الطاحة وياسين محمد مصطفى صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم Salamun alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Felicitation and solution, salutation to the Imam of our time and ulama and the lover of the truth and justice on the occasion of the birth anniversary of Sayyida Fatima to Zahra Salamullahi alayha. The beloved daughter of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Allah, 
Eloquent speakers before me have spoken various issues and among the discussion a very important message on family bonding. I would like to add on this important matter on family bonding and to get lessons from the life of the Lady of Light, Hazrat Fatima to Zahra, Salamullahi Alaiha. Bonding, I, bonding in the family, how the bonding starts? Bonding in the family starts, we get the lesson from Bibi Fatima and Mullah Ali alayhi salam. That whenever we gather to hear about the personality, it's not only to hear about the life history, but to derive, derive, derive lessons from the lives and implement in our lives. That would be the true meaning of celebrating and pondering on the life of the particular personality. Family bonding starts with marriage. And the most perfect marriage we see is that of Imam Ali alayhi salam and Lady Fatima alayhi salam. We see that firstly they were contentment and satisfac satisfaction in their lives. That would be the first lesson to take that we have to be satisfied whatever we have. We need to be grateful to Allah and stop comparing the relationship of other people's relationships. Secondly, marriage from the perspective of Imam Ali alayhi salam and Lady Fatima is to reach the Almighty aim. And that aim was what? What, what was the aim? Ultimately, aim was, was there was Allah. Yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was the aim of them. Thirdly, we are human beings. And we have to treat each other as human beings. When Bibi al Fatima alayhi salam asked Imam Ali alayhi salam, have I wronged you? Have I ever gone against you? Imam Ali alayhi salam replied by saying, I have found you to be the most perfect, most pious person. Likewise, Imam Ali alayhi salam said, I have never angered you and that is the element of humanity within the marriage. This is the cooperation in perfect marriage. You, all, you also need, we also need to have a communication between the two, husband and wife have to be, to communicate each other. The central theme marriage of Imam Ali alayhi salam and Bibi Fatima alayhi salam was Allah haq subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fatima alayhi salam was a perfect human being. The highest, but if we want to see the perfection, the highest form of the perfection is Allah. That is what we learn from them. Remember, Bibi Fatima alayhi salam is our role model. We get this from the Imam of our time. He beautifully states that my role model is my mother Fatima. And you remember the narration that Mahdi is one of the sons of Fatima. So loving Fatima is to take lesson from Fatima. Loving Fatima is to ensure that the value of Fatima manifests in our lives. Loving Fatima is to ensure that you stand for the what Fatima stood for. We want to appreciate the life of this great personality. When we examine the life of Sayyida Fatima to Zahra Salamullahi Alaiha from the hum humanitarian approach, you will realize that Sayyida Fatima is the epitome of humanity. Whoever wants to learn humani humanity, if you are looking at the door to knock, knock the door of Fatima to Zahra, and there are so many phases of humanity in the life of this great lady. And we know the phase and the importance of mentioning this is to remind us to go out there and represent the Lady of Light. The first verses are the verses which you heard from Sister Muzlafa, who recited from Surah Tul Insan, verse number seven, eight, and nine. You all know the event about it, so I'm not going to talk about it. The first stage was asking from Allah to cure Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein alayhi salam. And then, the, what was the what the vows they asked for? They said that we'll fast when these children will be all right, we'll be fine. So when they were about to break their fast, they were tested by Allah. 
and Nidhi came to the house and asked for something. The sacrifice what the head to break the fast and give the net Nidhi. That's an epitome of humanity. In the Quran, Hak subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Yufuna bin nadri wa yakhafuna yawman kana sharruhu mustatira. They fulfill their vows and fear the day whose evil will spread far and wide. Wa yut'imuna ta'ama ala hubbihi miskinan wa yatiman wa asira. And inspire us to follow by giving of their own to the poor for love of Allah, the orphan and the captive. And then what else? Innama nut'imukum li wajhillah la nuridu minkum jaza'an wa la shukura. We feed you, we give you food only for the sake of Allah. Or, or any, or we don't want any thanks, any reward for this. So this is the trend of humanity from Bibi Fatima. Bibi Fatima is selfless. She went out and then sacrificed by giving whatever she had. Also important for the sake of humanity is keen and never. <coughs> Fatima was selfless. So if we see that Imam Hassan salam is narrating that I saw my mother praying and her praying was only for her neighbors then I asked, Mama, Mom, why not us? What she replied, my mother said, others first than ourselves. This, that's the example of humanity. Today, we are gathered here for Mother's Day and Women's Day, so let me speak about a mother. Mother love is specific kind of, of love. Her love is the strong love that we can fall into when we are stressed stretched and uncertain and feeling like we just can't do because just handle what's happening in our life mother is the greatest gift to a child by allah it's a mother who always loves her children without expecting anything from them in return some day she does anything to protect her child she does not only morally support a child, but also prepares a child to be a better person in life. After Allah, it's our mother who has the most special place in our hearts and lives. Not only we need our mother's place, but even our prophets did. For example, as we all know, Hazrat Musa Moses used to go to Mount Sinai. And one day when Prophet Musa left, Allah took away his mother. They, and Allah, when he, Musa is going, Allah said to Musa, O oh Moses, today when you are walking, be careful. Take your steps as the person who used to pray for you, who used to do dua for you, is no more. O oh Musa, your mother has passed away. So this how is the mother. And mother love is unique. Once the hunter was going to hunt, mother duck told the hunter, do me a favor, you are going to hunt, please don't hunt my child. The hunter answered, there will be so many ducklings, how will I know who is your child? So the mother duckling replied, the most beautiful one is my child. So the hunter went and hunted. As he was coming back with the dunkling, the mother duck told the hunter, he did not do fair, you did not do good. You killed my child. The hunter replied, you told me the most beautiful child and what I hunted was the most ugliest duck. Mother duck said, you should have looked with the mother's eyes. As for the mother, her child is the most beautiful so see this is the mother and prophet so everybody when can by said that mother what is the mother so uh, mother is that that we should appreciate our mother and now the discussion discussions about women empowerment have been at the forefront it, it, this has been a concern because it has been ages that women have been living in, in this male dominated society but now the struggles and problems are being vocalized. These points are further highlighted when women in relatively better have getting better positions than others, 
are also echoing the same. The struggles women face right from being a child is unimaginable. Little girls are denied education while their brothers don't encounter such, denial, such denials. The reason for this seems fatal as the family presumes the role of woman is in the kitchen and she should only take care of household work. She should pick roti and chapatis and everything. The mother should cook and cook and the, and the ladies should cook and cook. So, and the lack of education is a huge hindrance that is curbing the growth of women in societies. In town and urban areas, girls get education and secure good positions but even then they are treated unequally or inferior to their male counterparts. Women are paid far less than they deserve to their male colleague for the same work just because of their gender. To actually empower women, this discrimination should be put to an end and gender roles as to what jobs should be done and by whom should be is an individual choice and not the society's. The pressure are limitations by the society for women to say the least. So what should we do? So let's break free from this defined and limiting gender roles and start to live equal lives at home. So the next generation knows everyone is equal because it's tiring to hear that equality is still a dream is it upon us to make it reality? I end with prayers for all those who are sick around the world. May Allah give them health and praying for the peace in the world. And for that, let us recite five times Amma Yujib for all the people who are sick in the world, who are in trouble. So let's recite five times Amma Yujib. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Amma Yujib al Mustara Izada. Irhamna bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajil Thank you Kanizanti for that powerful speech um, The last speech of the program I'd now like to call upon Sister Fatima Gulamali who is a former employee of the Iranian Embassy أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب يشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي Respected elders خانم الواندي خانم بيراني ماما شامين LMC chair lady respected members of our community and respected members and all invitees السلام عليكم and a very good afternoon to you all Considering the fact that it's already Salah time, I will cut down a lot of what I have to say so that we can fast forward this program. As we all know, we have gathered here today to celebrate the descending of a very pure lady, of a lady who is a role model in every aspect of life. In the short lifespan of Sayyida Fatima al-Zahra, we see her as a perfect daughter a perfect wife, a perfect social service, a perfect housemaster, a perfect mother. I don't need to say much because Chair Lady has spoken so much. Alhamdulillah. My elders before me say that paradise lies under the feet of the mother. What I wanted to shed light on is, as Mama Shamim said, we have to work on it. So how does paradise come and lay under the feet of us ladies who become mothers? It does not just come by default or by proxy. What happens is that the lady has to shape her lifestyle in such a way that she follows the lifestyle of Sayyida Fatima to Zahra, that she follows those role models and be a daughter like Sayyida Fatima was, a mother like Sayyida Fatima was, a daughter-in-law like Sayyida Fatima was, and when we give, when our character is such, 
that our children follow our footsteps they give out and that's how <laughs> Thank you so, so much.